Hi everybody, Simon here. This is part two to the Michael and Kung story. So again, if you're not into the stories and the long stories, turn the video off, go elsewhere. For those of you following and seen the part one, let's carry on. Sorry I made you wait, but you wanted these stories, so it's your own fault. We left it that Michael and Kung had just had a meal their first lunch and Michael had dropped himself in it by trying to buy Kung and made her an offer to come back to his room and she categorically refused and almost left and after begging and spilling out his love for her he sat in the restaurant totally in Kung's hands. They carry on chatting, they finish the food and they've got a drink um, and Michael has said are you working? And uh, Kung said, "I uh, no, I'm not working. I, I've got a bit of money now. I'm looking at trying to get a business. So I'm doing a lot of research for that. And Michael's said, what sort of business are you trying to go into? And Kung said, I'd really like to get um, a guest house uh, somewhere nice and um, settle down and he's settled down and she said yeah I would like to settle down with someone find a partner um, and at that point she's like I've uh, thanks very much for the meal I'm gonna go got some stuff to do and Michael's oh, okay can we see each other again uh, for uh, another meal or go somewhere together and Kung said I'm a little bit busy um, tomorrow uh, the day after how about we uh, we spend the day together uh, maybe we'll go somewhere what do you think and Michael's fantastic so they've arranged to meet on Beach Road 11 o'clock in the morning not tomorrow but the day after and Kung's got up, Michael's got up, he's leant forward to give her a kiss on the cheek and she's pulled back and shook his hand, said thank you and walked off. <laughs> That's another hook. And Michael's, he's emotionally drained. He almost lost her by putting that silly offer in. Um, but he's learned something today that uh, she can't be bought. She's not a bar girl, she's not one of those sort of girls. He offered her 2,000 baht and she's not interested. Which gives him even more hope that um, he's right, that she is special. Anyway, this is lunchtime, he's gone off in a hurry to find his friends and tell them how, what's happened and the fact that she almost killed him for offering money. And he's told his friends and they're sort of, hmm, that's unusual, that's, uh, we didn't expect that. And you're falling for her and what's going on and anyway, they spent a couple of hours talking about it all. All Mike did was convince his friends that Michael is falling in love with this girl. He's gone off home, he's had some food, gone home. The whole next day he's, on. he's not gone to his friends, he, he's gone and sat in a cafe at Jomtian on the beach there and he's spent the whole day looking out over the sea dreaming of his new love that he's found on Beach Road in Patea. A girl that's 42 years old that's been in the massage industry for over 20 years that could mean anything. She could have had a massage shop, she could be just an oil massage girl but she could have been a soapy massage girl. She could have been anything for 20 plus years. She's 42, he's 65. He's trying to add all the numbers together and it's just not working out. He can't work her out. Dress is nice, she doesn't work. She's got some money and she's trying to look at a business. I mean, a guest house, that's, that's a lot of money to get a guest house business. And he's starting to think, well, maybe she's got a lot of money. Maybe this is 
a rich Thai woman who's been very successful. Uh, he's then starting to worry that maybe she's too good for him. His mind's playing crazy games. So, day goes, the next day comes, 11 in the morning. He wanders off to Beach Road and Kung appears walking down the road looking stunning in a, a dress with a nice handbag and uh, comes along, walks up to him, smiles and then kisses him on the cheek. And Michael's like, wow. With that, he's thinking to himself, whoa, 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 I didn't expect that. And Kung's turned around to him and said, what would you like to do today? Um, I quite fancy uh, going and looking around a few shops, but maybe not here in Patea. Maybe we could go up to Bangkok for the day. This is, you know, a total shock to Michael. He thought he, thought he was going to just go down a bar and sit with her all day and get food and drink and chat so he's uh yeah fine but he's not really dressed for it he, he's got shorts on and sandals um and he says well i'm not really dressed for this uh appropriate for going up to bangkok plus it's a lot of couple of hours to get there and um it's going to be a long day and she's well i don't mind she, would you like to pop back to your condo? We can get a taxi and you can change and we can go from there. And he's like, okay, okay. And so they walk across the road from Beach Road to one of the soys and there's a couple of um, Bangkok taxis there that have dropped off. So uh, Kung goes over to the taxis, has a chat with them, comes back. So this taxi will take us to your condo, wait while you change, and then take us to Bangkok. And Mike's like, well, that's fantastic, okay. So he noticed that Kung's handbag, it's a big handbag, you know, and he's got in the taxi with it and he's on the way, he said, are we going to come back this evening from Bangkok or would you rather stay over Bangkok and have a bit more shopping tomorrow? And Kung's turned around to him and smiled and said, we'll just see how it goes, shall we? Maybe pop some overnight clothes in a bag when you get to your condo and see what happens. And Mike's like, oh my God, I've just hit the jackpot. I've won the lottery. Huh. <coughs> taxi up to his condo. He stays in the taxi and he's gone in. She's on the telephone talking to someone now. Gone in, got changed, grabbed some clothes for an overbike bag, dived in his safe, got some cash um, and a couple of cards, closed the safe, locked up the condo, out in the taxi. And they're off, Bangkok. He wasn't expecting that. And his two friends, he hasn't told them and uh, they're gonna be wondering where he's gone, what's happening. They've got up to Bangkok and they've dropped off in Pratanam Market, which is a wholesale market, clothing wholesale market on uh, Petraburi Road. So they've dropped up, dropped, dropped off by there. And Kung said to him, um, there's a couple of shops I'd love to see in the, in the, uh, in the mall behind the market. Um, I'd like to get myself a couple of bits of clothes while we're here, that'd be nice. So Michael said, I really don't mind where we go in Bangkok or what we do. Let's go with what you want, it's fine. So she took him through, he, he'd been to Bangkok a few times, but he didn't know these markets and the shopping malls and things. She took him through to uh, a shopping mall and um, she bought a couple of nice elegant dresses. She didn't take too long either, she knew what she wanted. And then said, let's go and get some food, but we'll go to another shopping mall. So we'll jump in another little taxi, it's not far. Jumped in the taxi. Siam Shopping Centre, which is opposite the MBK Molbacon Shopping Centre. So it's right in the centre of Bangkok. The Siam one is the probably the nicest, it's the most exclusive, I, w 
I would say in the old days it was anyway. And they've gone in there and there's food shops everywhere, restaurants, different floors. Anyway, they've gone in and uh, Kung said to him, what sort of food do you want? Do you want Thai? Do you want Western? Um, Michael prefers Western food. He's not mad on Thai food, but he said, can we have some Western food? And they've gone into a steakhouse. Um, Kung's fine with that. And she's ordered some Western food. And she's starting to open up a little bit to him. They've spent a few hours in each other's company now. And she starts telling him that uh, she hasn't got any family. Tragedy stuck, uh, struck her uh, mum and dad, um, some sort of accident. And that she'd only got the brother who was a couple of years older that lived in Patea. And she was hoping to bring the brother into her future business. Um, and at the moment he works in a clothing shop as a, just as a salesman. She, again, he's asked her uh, where she was born and where she's lived. She was born just south of Bangkok, but she, as she said, she'd been in Patea for 20 plus years. And he's asked her then, you say the massage industry, um, and she's cut him sort of pretty quick and said that she was a manager in massage shops. And that's how she left it. Fantastic. He's met a girl now that's not a bar girl, wasn't a bar girl. She was a manager. She's got money. She's looking for a business. Now, Mike didn't want to come to Thailand and get a business. He wanted to come and retire. But here he's facing now a beautiful Thai woman, 42 years old, 13 years younger than him, who's looking at getting into a business. It's not what he was looking for, but he's he's besotted. He's absolutely fallen for Kung. Anyway, so they've had some food and they've had a wander around, do some shopping, and then Kung said to Mike, "I think we should uh, maybe find a hotel for the evening and we can get changed, and later on we'll go out for a meal." What do you think? And he's yeah, fantastic. And he said, "Well." where should we get a hotel i mean he knows the areas but he daren't say something like let's go to nana plaza or cowboy um and kung said uh do you like chinese food and michael yeah i love chinese food he said let's get a hotel in chinatown in yawarad uh, section of bangkok and she said we'll get a taxi we'll get up to the main road and uh, there's a couple of hotels along there we can probably find one of those so yeah <laughs> he's pulling them along on a lead he's being led from place to place they've jumped in the cab 15 minutes up the road they're in uh, chinatown and she's picked the chinatown hotel which is about a three star four star nothing special um they've got out the cab and they've gone in there and this is the point Michael is behind Kung walking up to the desk and he doesn't know whether to take the lead or let Kung take the lead. Is this going to be two rooms? Is this going to be one room? He hasn't got the fog. He daren't ask. In the restaurant, remember he asked, offered her 2,000 baht for the night and she almost walked. He, he doesn't know what to do. He's petrified. He's scared of making the wrong mistake totally hooked and in her hands so they've gone up to the desk mm, what do you think well actually I'm gonna leave it there and that's part two over yep yeah, this is a multi-part I'm sorry it's a tease catch you next time bye for now